Rendlesham Forest, Suffolk County, England. 200 miles east of Rudlow Manor lie six square miles of woodlands that has become notorious as the site of Great Britain's most incredible UFO encounter. On December 26, 1980, near an airbase leased to the United States Air Force by the RAF, strange lights are reported on the horizon in what appears to be a possible downed aircraft. Two U.S. servicemen are dispatched to the site. According to accounts, radios failed as they approached the targeted area, and the air itself felt electrically charged as they closed in. Once at the so-called crash site, the men observed a strange triangular craft on the ground, approximately three meters wide at its base. It appeared to be either hovering or on legs, and it had clearly come down into this small clearing and smashed some of the branches off the trees. So there was, there was physical evidence which was looked at afterwards. And so the men looked at this strange object. I noticed that there was an inscription on the side of the uh, aircraft. I was expecting to find, uh, I don't know, USAF, uh, something like that. And what I find is glyphs, uh, pictorial glyphs, making no sense at all. And then I was running my hand over the side of the craft. It was very warm to touch. At this time, we were getting a feeling of electricity that was just bouncing. It was much, much stronger. There was this feeling of being drawn into it or being pulled into it. Like someone was holding a picture of, of zeros and ones in my mind's eye. The strange vision Sergeant Penniston had upon touching the craft has made this one of Britain's most famous UFO encounters. But ancient astronaut theorists suggest that even more compelling is what happened after. The following evening, further strange sightings occurred, and also the night after, reported by US Air Force Colonel Charles Hall. Colonel Hall led his own search party to put an end to the confusion. But instead of finding a logical explanation, they discovered high levels of radioactivity where Burroughs and Penniston had previously seen the strange craft and three impact holes in the ground. They then spotted a light in a nearby field that suddenly came towards them through the trees at high speed. One of the people with me said, look there to the north. There were four or five objects in the sky. They were elliptical and round. They changed shape. They moved at very high speed, made sharp angular turns, as though they were doing some type of a grid search. One came at high speed, stopped directly overhead, three, four, maybe 5,000 feet, and sent down a concentrated beam about eight or 10 feet from us. It was about a foot in diameter. I would describe it today as probably like a laser beam. We noticed the other object to the south sent it on similar beams on Woodbridge Base. Apparently, these beams were falling down into or near the weapons storage area. I was really concerned then. I suspect it was some kind of scan to see what was inside, the ordnance inside. What we do know is Lieutenant Colonel Holt saw Colonel Williams just a few hours later and told him that beams had been shone down into the storage bunkers. And he said, I think the ordinance needs to be checked out. If Colonel Holt's report is true, why were these craft emitting beams of light down into the Woodbridge base? According to some ancient astronaut theorists, they may have been conducting a search, not for nuclear weapons, but for one of their own craft. They were moving around erratically, he said, as if uh, he was conducting some sort of grid search. And the reason he said that was that beams of light were firing down from this UFO into one of the most sensitive parts of the base, the weapons storage area. Maybe the aliens would be looking for a crashed UFOs maybe their own alien technology to prevent us from trying to back engineer it and build our own spacecraft.